And this is how Floridians fight the coronavirus, vitamin C. And today I'm here with Katie again. Hey. Remember meet her from our Epcot video. We're chilling on the beach. There's a few people out. It is still spring break. People still are here even though we are uh, in the middle of a pandemic. But you know, that's what Floridians do. We just go to the beach and chill. <laughs> Daytona Beach is all on the Atlantic coast, so it's not closed down as you can see, but there are some beaches in Florida that have been closed down, including Miami. You said Panama City Beach. Panama City Beach closed. They closed the restaurants they and closed stores the restaurants. and everything, and nobody has a job anymore. Yeah, which is really sad. And like Florida, we rely so heavily on tourist industry that this is our lifestyle, so if this goes away, we don't have nothing. But we're just gonna chill on the beach here for a while, just kind of soak up some sun, get some vitamin C and D, and uh, just kind of see what the day has for us. Um, Katie, since she works at Disney, does have a couple weeks off. I don't, since I'm in car sales, so I'm still working, but today is my day off, so that's why we're on the beach, just soaking it up. I'm so happy she has a day off. Here. So happy she has a day off, so we could go to the beach together. <laughs> we don't. I, we don't have days off together very much. Never. Never. All right. Well, we'll check in a little bit. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in a second. The water is so cold. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Did you know Daytona Beach is one of the few beaches you can still drive on in the U.S.? Yeah, there's a couple of them in Florida, but Daytona is one of them. And apparently ice cream trucks too. As you can see, there's still a lot of people on the beach for how we're supposed to be in quarantine. But you know, hey, we're all six feet apart, right? <laughs> Go over there uh, at least until the virus calms down a little bit 
because it sounds like they are going to be closing some more beaches in Florida. I heard that Clearwater is going to be closing and I wonder if Daytona is going to be one of the ones next. However, as you could see from the videos that there really wasn't that many people for it being spring break. It really was kind of spread out too. People were definitely keeping their distance. So, I mean, I feel like Daytona was doing it right, but it's a shame that other beaches are still having issues with too many people being out there. So, I think eventually just all Florida beaches are going to be closed off from the public. Which, you know, kind of stinks, but, you know, I get it. It has to be done, I guess, for the safety of everyone. And it really, honestly, will affect our economy the most, though. That's the one thing. Because, I mean, like I was saying in the video, we are a tourist industry state. That's just what we are. And so if we don't have that income coming in, every job will be affected. Not just even like the ones that are directly involved in hospitality or entertainment, but mine will be affected too because, I mean, people that are buying cars from me are most likely working in those hospitality roles. So car sales are going to tank. But hey, whatever. It means there's probably going to be good sales. So if you actually do need a car, now's the time. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I... I love going to Disney. I love going to the beaches. So it really is kind of devastating for me to not be able to do those things. But I mean, this is getting kind of serious. Some more news, each, the news is just changing daily, which is the crazy thing. And speaking of news, there's actually some news that has come out about Disney, how they may be opening at kind of a, well, a limited opening, I guess, when they do finally open after the closure, which, I mean, they've been closed since Monday, the parks have, and the resorts will be closed tomorrow, Friday. Uh, so they are maybe going to open up after the two weeks, two weeks, maybe longer, and have like a limited opening, which there's an article that came out with it. And I'm going to read some of like the suggestions or things that they say that might be occurring with some pictures of Disney to put us back in the Disney magical spirit. So I'm going to put in some uh, pictures here and have a voiceover of talking about the lovely mouse and what's going to happen at the mouse house. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and subscribing. And if you have anything about questions about beaches or anything like that 40 beaches like which one do I like the best which I might say in another video later comment below which one do you like the best I want to know that too anyways here we go into news about Disney so here is the update that I have from this article about Disney and the possibility for a limited opening when they finally do open which once again right now is set for April 1st but I have a feeling and a lot of other news sources have a feeling that's going to be extended out to quite a lot longer. So this article that I found was from WDWmagic.com uh, and it says the title is called Disney is exploring a modified park experience to be deployed as soon as park reopening is possible. Here are the ideas that they say may be when they reopen. It says, reopening of the parks in phases with a limited selection of attractions and shows that can be adapted to capacity and guest spacing needs. This is a pattern that was seen before following the 9-11 attacks and hurricane closures. And I mean, I can kind of see how that could be. When Hurricane Dorian was going to come directly to Orlando, they did do kind of like a limited opening um, after that ended up blowing over and not coming towards us so they had like Epcot only open and it was like pretty much only a couple of attractions were open and there really wasn't that much to do but no one was there anyway so it was just kind of limited so I, I kind of see what they're saying there how it'll just kind of be like a limited um, selection of attractions and, and things that you can do not much even food openings too the next thing they suggest is limiting the number of people in indoor queue spaces this may see the use of virtual queues similar to the boarding groups that were deployed for the opening of Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. That one kind of has me, of course, scared a little bit because as I've said in other videos, I do not wake up early. So if I go to any park and I have to like go into a virtual queue in the morning and they all get filled up, like that's going to be 
horrible. So <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. Maybe they'll find a different way of doing it. We will see. And then it says, eliminating entertainment that require close gatherings such as fun nightly fireworks, shows, and parades. Understandable, but that will be kind of sad because fireworks are amazing. And then it says, table service restaurants, capacity reduced to maintain a maximum 50% occupancy with tables being spaced at least six feet apart. Okay. And then no queuing at quick service restaurants with mobile order via My Disney Experience taking its place for all transactions. Makes sense to me. Uh, suspending meet, meet and greets with face characters, which includes the Disney princesses. That's going to be devastating for a lot of kids, but hey, I don't necessarily like meeting a lot of characters, so I'm okay with that. I have met a few, obviously, a lot, actually, but I don't really, it's not a huge thing for me when I go to Disney. I go for the rides, so that's fine. And then reducing the maximum capacity of buses and monorails also makes sense. Continuation of hands and washing stations and sanitizers throughout the property. And so all of this kind of makes sense for me. This is just like ideas that they're floating around, it says, inside of the company. So none of these are going to be set in stone yet, but they could be a possibility. And so if you are planning a trip to Orlando, planning a trip to Disney, just a heads up that this may be what you run into. It may not be the full Disney experience, which of course I apologize in advance for uh, because of course when Disney is fully operational, it's amazing. But you know, they still know how to give some magic even when they're not fully open and you will have a magical experience regardless. It just depending on how much you can do so some things may be closed but you know what this is all for the name of safety and Disney's number one goal is safety of course and I think that's evident when you go into the parks just on how attentive all the cast members are so once again thank you to all the cast members for helping alleviate the stress of planning a Disney vacation right now and also an update back to the my other videos about CP, so it sounds like they did have a little bit of leeway or a little bit of a, a plan in action for uh, CP, ICPs that were stuck in Orlando. They kind of gave them more support, but ultimately most of them did have to do it all on their own. So it was kind of a crazy thing, but some people did take in some um, ICPs or CPs as well too in Orlando area as far as like Casco. So, you know, us Orlando people, we stick together. That's what we do. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching and subscribing to my channel. Put a like on this video and I will see you next time. I'm not sure at all what our next video will be since... Travel videos obviously are not going to be very possible at the moment, but you know what? We are in this together and hey, if it has to be like just a couple like videos going back to like things I've done, maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but don't worry, content will still be coming and I appreciate all of you and let me know what you guys are going through with this crazy thing that's going on in the world. And I'd like to hear everyone's story. I am a writer. That is actually what my degree is in. So stories are my jam. Anyways, guys, thanks again. See you next time.